Hi, I'm Mo Maduro, owner of Eagle Rider San Francisco Sport Touring Motorcycle Rental, specialized in BMW, Ducati, Honda. So naturally, I was excited when I found out about this new Goldwing. Having had the other Gold Wings, 2014 and 2013, I was excited about those bikes. They handle extremely well. For something over 900 pounds, you have to ride one to believe just how nimble it is. I always tell people you still have to stop, but going through the turns, especially if it's a road that you know and you can have some confidence around going through the turns, you can move very, very quick on that bike. Some of you may have seen the videos of bikes go, of Gold Wings going through Tail of the Dragon, just to give you an idea. Well, this one, is even more nimble, even more capable, it's lighter, faster, it's just an all-around great sport touring machine. It even looks like a sport touring motorcycle, whereas the other one, although it handled and rolled like a sport touring bike, it didn't look like a sport touring bike. This one looks like a proper sport touring bike. Now, when I first rode the bike, the first thought that came to mind was how Honda has done such a great job integrating what they've learned from Formula One IndyCar and MotoGP and put it all into one package. The bike literally felt like it was on rails. I have a test ride loop that I use so I can experience a motorcycle in a lot of different environments all in a short period of time. whoop de doos going through twisties, stops, starts, hills, sweepers, a little bit of speed, those kinds of things. And this bike shined. It doesn't feel anything like it's 833 pounds. And as I said, I felt like it was on rails. I kept thinking MotoGP meets Formula One. So I got a chance to take it into the twisties. At first, I was a little bit it was a little bit cumbersome, wasn't feeling it. I was in tour mode. And, you know, in tour mode, the engine is not, the, the, the mapping of the engine transmission is not set up to be through the twisties. Once I put it in sport mode, night and day difference. The bike seems to know what the road was doing. I never had a problem with it shifting early. Sometimes I've been in cars where you're in the twisties and it's, it's kind of hunting, the transmission doesn't know what gear to be in. Never felt that here. If I'm accelerating through a turn, it, it just hung in there with that same gear. On the straightaway when I'm accelerating, get a little more speed going, it would shift. But when I closed the throttle, it would downshift sometimes. But I always felt like I was in the right gear. And with the seven speed transmission, that's not hard to do. The bike worked very, very well in twist. In fact, sport mode is so good in the twisties, I decided not to use it when I was out on the highway or the boulevard or whatever, because it, the bike didn't feel as sorted in sport mode as it did in tour mode in those environments. Now, on the highway, if you want to go faster, sport mode is certainly going to do it, but you can do the same thing with tour by using the, the manual shifter. The other thing that uh, impressed me about this bike, now the Goldwing's always had good stopping power. A lot of people don't realize that the front rotors, if you just press the front brake, you're only using one rotor. When you press the rear brake, the other rotor kicks in. So if you're a front brake user like I am, you're gonna feel like, wow, this bike is not really stopping. But as soon as you touch the back brake, it locks up and it just stops, really. Not literally locks up, but it just stops. It just clamps down. You got six pistons in the front, two pistons in the rear. Six pistons on the front, that's on a 320 rotor. That's a lot of stopping power there. Plus with the weight uh, and the, the way they've integrated it, we'll show you that too. Uh, they've done a nice job. So the twisties were great. I have a, a row here called the uh, Highway 9. It's a lot, of, a lot of nice transitions back and forth. Got a chance to see how the bike rolled through that flowing where you don't have to really slow down much. You can just keep it flowing, get a nice rhythm. The bike was, was perfect in that environment as well. S's, sweepers, all of those roads work. I took it out to Alpine Road, which is one of our tightest ones here. And the sheer length of this bike, 66, almost 68, 67 inch wheelbase, 66.7. That's a lot of length. That's up there with the Honda Fury, right? It's uh, seven or eight inches longer than an RT on the wheelbase side. So when you're going through this super tight road, just the sheer length is gonna be a bit of a challenge. But that said, the bike did not leave me wanting. I felt pretty good, and I, I would say I'm not going to be able to keep up with an F800 GS through that tight road, but they're not going to leave me that far behind because I wasn't like babying the bike around the turns. It was going pretty good. I would say the sweepers and S-turns are probably the best place where that's, that's what you would expect from a sport touring, a sport touring bike, especially one of this size. The other thing that impressed me with this DCT transmission is the highway modes. The highway, I'll call it the, the ride modes, as how it's integrated with the transition. So for example, I tried it since it pretty much goes to seventh gear right away in tour mode. In sport mode, it tends to go to sixth gear. 
in seventh. If you get on the gas, it'll drop to six pretty quickly. Every once in a while, depending on where you're rolling on from, it'll drop down to five, to, 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 to five. Like if you're rolling on from 50, it'll drop down to five. What's interesting, if you drop the transmission down to three before you do your roll on, the engine will stay right near the red line. So it'll shift when it's dropping 800 to 1,000 revs below red line and then take you right back up there again, just like you would if you were in a manual transmission. It's very, very impressive. Same thing in sport mode. If you downshift manually, you're gonna get a lot more pickup because it's gonna take you higher into the rev range and keep you higher in the rev range. That's why it's so, I think, um, it feels so integrated. They did a lot of work to figure out what riders need and what riders are gonna want in these different environments. Next thing I wanna talk about is living with the Gold Wing. Getting into urban environments, taking for a tour, I took it down to World Superbike Week, so you're in that traffic, you're in that bike week mode. You know, good thing the bike has the front, forward, and backward now with the electric motor because I did feel at first that the, uh, with the old Gold Wing, I could feather the, the clutch, stay in that friction zone, and I felt like I could tool along in like one and a half miles an hour as long as I wanted to, just, just enough to keep the balance, just keep the bike upright. This doesn't seem to have that. I, 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 it's like three miles an hour, three or four miles an hour, or zero. And so that was a little bit tricky sometimes if you're trying to just navigate something and you grab a little bit too much throttle, you bounce on the throttle a little bit and the bike will lurch, right? It's not that confident, it's confidence inspiring. What I found out is you go to rain mode and you're doing that, you do have a little bit slower speed and you can be a little bit easier, it's a little easier with the throttle to modulate your speed at that slightly, slightly below walking speed. The, the forward and reverse electric motor, the forward motor is not enough for you to keep your balance, but it is great for parking and getting in and out of tight spaces. So I would say in the urban environment, in the parking situation, you've got, you're covered with the electric motor and if you go to rain mode, getting around through gas stations is fine. If that becomes a problem, you can put the parking brake on slightly. I don't know if Honda recommends this, but you put the braking, parking brake on slightly and that will give you just enough pressure that you can turn the throttle and not have the bike lurching. I also found that if I use the front brake, it's a little bit easier to modulate my speed than the rear brake. So these are just some things playing with it. As far as in the city traffic, in San Francisco we have a lot of hills, a lot of traffic in the city. Navigating through that, the bike was fine, always predictable, easy to manage, never felt like I was on something too big. If I needed to go in and out between some cars, we split lanes here. The bike is not hard to split lanes. The mirrors are a little bit wide, so you know, you got the same thing with any large bike. Harleys have that same thing, RTs have the same thing. Cargo space is a little bit sh smaller than the past Gold Wing, but you're, it's a good trade-off. I mean, look how the bike looks. It's, it's a much, Com much more compact look than, than the other gold wing. So the seating position was just right. I never felt like I was out of place. In fact, it's funny how you get on a bike and you feel like, what would this bike be perfect for? I would easily ride this bike to 2000 on a 2,000 mile trip. It would be very easy to make that decision to take this bike, go on a 2,000 mile trip, do some sport touring along the way, twisties, and I wouldn't feel like I wanted to be on the highway or wanted to be on the twisties, wherever I was would be perfect on that bike. That's not always the case. There are some bikes on the slow roads, they just don't feel that comfortable when you're tooling along at 30 miles an hour through the, some of the towns. There are other bikes that in the twisties after a couple of hours in the twisties is, is too mentally demanding. This bike never, I never felt that anywhere. On the highway, twisties, in town, it always felt like it was the right bike for the place. That's something to be said for this motorcycle and the R&D that Honda put into it. The electronics on this motorcycle, I did not get the chance to spend much time. I was more interested in the riding experience. The last area to talk about is just some quick comparison. Since I have had experience with the K1600 GTL, BMW RT, which I still have in the fleet, and the past Gold Wings. And I would say, the, for me, the, the best benchmark or the best comparison is the BMW R1200 RT. Not the 1600. The 1600 to me is much more of an Autobahn bike. It's, it is definitely designed, as, when you ride you can tell, for those high speed sweepers, it's extremely stable. Sure, you can go through the twisties with it, but it's a little bit more work than the RT. The RT you can flow a little bit better. The, the, the 1600, you're paying a lot more attention to your line and where you're placing the bike. So that does take its toll. Whereas if you're gonna be on a bike that you don't have to work so hard, you're gonna be in the twisties a little bit long. So the RT is the, 
bike to compare it to. RT has a wheelbase of 58 and a half inches. This has a wheelbase of 66.7 inches. That's a big, big difference. And it shows up in how the RT is able to navigate through some tighter roads. That said, because of the way this bike is set up, the suspension, the way it works so well together, the 18 inch front wheel with this slightly more aggressive geometry, by the way, the rear wheel is the 16 inch, like in the past, gold wings. But I can still move through a tight section. I don't feel like I'm on a long bike. So other than a road as tight as Alpine, it's not a bike that I would be on and say, oh, I don't want to get on that road, it's too tight. They, they've managed to figure out how to do that and make this bike work. Storage capacity is roughly the same as with the, the RT. The weight of the RT is about 200 pounds less. Again, that's significant, but Honda wears its weight so well, always, they always have, that that does not show up. It's uh, about 50 or 60 pounds heavier than the K1600 GTL. And in riding it, the K1600 GTL to me actually feels a little bit heavier. And I think it's because it's more top heavy than this bike is. And also the way the geometry is, it just tends to wander more, especially at slow speed. Whereas I didn't have that problem. So splitting lanes on this bike is easier, for example, in the K1600 GT. But that's not where most people are spending their time on a bike like this. On the open highway, the K1600 GTL, I'm probably going to want to go faster just because it's designed that way. This bike, I was comfortable at any speed. By the way, if you do what I was talking about earlier, where you downshift and then get on the gas, the bike does climb into triple digits very, very quickly. It's always been the case with Gold Wings, but this one seems to be a little bit, get up there a little bit faster. It only has 125 horsepower, only has 125 foot pounds of torque, which is not big number. Those are not big numbers when you think about an 1800cc engine. However, the way I look at it in a sport touring bike, that means no drama. If I've got a bike that's designed where the engine is pushing up against the margin, like designed for performance, you're going to have some other trade-offs with that. When you have an engine that's well, well, well within its comfort zone, this bike will go 300,000 miles and more without having any problems. You can ride it every day, day after day. Your ECU is not being overworked. It's just going to give you the same exact predictable experience. And in a, from a touring perspective, especially if you're doing several hundred miles a day for a week at a time or two weeks at a time, you don't want to be thinking about the motorcycle. And that's why I think this bike is going to really shine. For those people who like to do the longer, the longer trips, the long distance sport touring, twisties, going from state to state to state, they're going to see this Goldwing as the one for them. So there you have it. Quick review of the Honda Goldwing. Please leave comments in the, in the section below. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have and other bikes that you may want to see reviewed. Thank you.